we're going to talk a little bit about um, something that's been going on um, publicly already. I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of going, I don't know if it's going viral, but for me, I think that they're, they're trying to sweep it under the rug type of thing. There was new research that came, not new, it, they've been doing this for 20 years now. They've been following people that took Tylenol during, the mothers that took Tylenol during their pregnancy. And there's, now they're saying that there's a connection, a link between Tylenol and autism and ADHD, meaning that during pregnancy, if you take Tylenol from a month to a, like a trimester, a trimester is, uh, th there's three trimesters in um, a woman's pregnancy, right? For every three months, nine months. So from one month, to three months, you take Tylenol, they found a connection saying that there's a possibility that Tylenol, acetaminophen, can have a higher risk of having your, your child be born with autism. So acetaminophen is what Tylenol is? Well, yeah, Tylenol. So just to get you uh, have a better understanding of what autism is, it's a uh, developmental disability caused by differences in the brain. People with ASD, autism spectrum disorder, often have problems with uh, social communication and interaction and restricted or repetitive behaviors or interests. People with ASD may also have different ways of learning, moving, or paying attention. Now, this is the definition by the CDC, the one that we no longer trust, right? Ever since COVID. Here's some examples of of um, social uh, communication or social interaction characteristics. Um, the child uh, avoids or does not keep eye contact or does not respond to the name by the nine months of age, does not show facial expressions like a happy, sad, angry, surprised by nine months of age, does not play simple interactive games like patty cake. Or, I'm, I'm gonna leave the link as well. They have uh, delayed language skills or delayed movements and delayed cognitive and learning skills. Sometimes even even hyperactive, impulsive, or inintentional behavior, epilepsy and seizure disorder, unusual eating and sleeping habits. You know, you can see anxiety and stress and excessive worry in people with uh, autism. And in, in the beginning, I thought that, I mean, what was your, your, your take on people with uh, that had autism? I never looked it up personally, but I just felt like it was a just a slower process of learning, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you you, you thought, right? Um, yeah. Actually, some of them are actually very, very gifted. There's a good and bad, but everyone always sees the, 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 bad, the, first, the bad first. The negative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why I'm saying this is that there's a lot of lawsuits out now. And if you might be eligible... Uh, if you for compensation, you know, for medical costs and bills and pain and suffering, mental health effects, lost wages or income, loss of enjoyment of life, permanent disabilities, like they're they're, they're trying to help out people that can uh, that have autistic children that can prove their case that they were taking acetaminophen during uh, pregnancy. You know, there's a lot of research to back this up. I, I think they did about there was like 26 research uh, journals out of like 29 that basically said that acetaminophen Acetaminophen, not causes, but that link. Because here's a word, right? People have to watch what they say when when they say cause, cause and effect, right? Like you have to have like a 95 percentile um, to to prove that such and such causes versus correlation. You know, Correl correlation is is kind of like uh, something that happens at the exact same time, but doesn't necessarily mean that it causes. There's, let me see, John Hopkins is a university. Uh, they did research and they said one out of 44 children are diagnosed with uh, autism disorder and 6 million kids are diagnosed with autism from it was, uh, 2016 to 2019. Okay, And nearly 9% of US children are diagnosed with ADHD. In this study, they, they followed people for like 20 years since 1998 to 2018. That's a long time. You know, they were following them and, but here's the thing, right? They were following them and they had questionnaires during this time. Through these recent findings, they said that, let me see, I gotta read this. So a professor at Bloomberg School Department of Population, Family and Reproductive Health, her name was, I, I can't, I'm not even gonna butcher it, Xiao Bin Wang, Wang. She says, this is besides the Tylenol thing, right? She says that people that were obese during pregnancy have a higher chance, doubles the chances of having a child with autism. And if you're obese and have diabetes, Diabetes, the odds are quadruple. That's four times the likelihood of your child having autism. And they had a s small sample size of uh, 8,600 mothers that they followed all the way until the age of 21. Uh, most of the mothers were obese, have diabetes, or hypertension. Hypertension is a high blood. And that they were just saying that there's these conditions that they have that have nothing to do with Tylenol, but that's just the overall picture of what they thought was before the whole Tylenol.
Mm. Era and uh, now mm. uh, they're saying that taking Tylenol during pregnancy as a so uh, is associated with uh, elevated risk of autism and ADHD. Now they're not saying it's black and white, but there's a case to be made. And I just wanted to share that is because there's there can be compensation. And when I say compensation, I don't mean oh go you know go go collect your money type of thing, you know. But there's there's people that are getting paid. I mean the average is five hundred thousand dollars. You know I mean the lowest is like fifty thousand. If you can make a strong case. Case, say if you keep your receipts, you can keep you you have uh, uh, any type of evidence that depending on how severe the the autism is, right? There's people that are being compensated for five million, ten million dollars. So this is something for people to you know to look out for. And I was I was mind blown. And as soon as I saw that article, my my buddy sent it to me through text. I shot it over to Carter, and, and Dan. I didn't even know how to respond to that. I was like, Yo, I gotta go share this. This is this is deep. You know, forget the Agent Orange, Agent Orange. You know, it's this is much more. This is this is America. Well, not America. This is the world. They did lab studies on rats, mice, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and they 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 saw something with the brain with the uh, the rats, saying that their cognitive abilities weren't even there. That go hand in hand with what the uh, con the symptoms of, of uh, autism look like in rats. Yeah, I just, yeah, I got too much information, but I'll, I'll link everything inside the description box below, man. I don't know, I don't know what to say about, to, or what to make of all this. Yeah, just do do your own due, due diligence and, and research and, and try to see where, where it lands on yourself. I mean, if you know yourself as a, a Tylenol user can can relate to it, then I, I would suggest dive, dive a little bit deeper and see where it takes you. Um, I doubt anybody has the Tylenol receipts, but. I mean, you, you get prescribed by the doctor. That's proof, in, you know. That's proof right there. I mean, doctors write prescriptions for Tylenol. It's, it's. See, all I'm saying is this, right? From here on now, if you don't have to take acetaminophen, I understand that you know women they go through a lot, and and they they thought that acetaminophen was uh, a safe thing to take. But now, I just want you guys to think twice before you make that decision. You know, if, if it's, maybe there's an alternative like ibuprofen, right? That That's that's uh, something that uh, you can possibly look into. I mean, they actually did a study side by side, Tylenol and ibuprofen, and Tylenol showed severe cases of autism. They said that the risk in male children, right, before the age of two, let's just say this, right, after after pregnancy, after the, 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 the child is born, they said that there's evidence saying that there's 40% increase of risk of having ASD among males in the US. You know, if your child is under two taking Tylenol. So for now, stay clear of Tylenol until you get you get the facts straight. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that I wanted to share and it's um it's urgent. This is something that that we shouldn't take lightly upon, you know. Since 1990, 1990, autism spiked up like dramatically, but it's something that I wish I you saw my reaction when I first found out, you know. But I, I'm so tired of, of doing countless hours of research to present this. My wife kept saying, stop telling people to go look it up themselves. <laughs> you know, but I'm not a doctor. You know, and, I, and all this research, they use such complicated words that I can't even, you know, comprehend but whatever i'm telling you there's there's other people that that are explaining it more well than i am i'm gonna link all this stuff they they're making that there's lawsuits for that they're taking case against the company it was johnson and johnson right those were the inventors of uh of acetaminophen and i forgot what the uh, mcneil but um these class it's a class action lawsuit by the way so hop on the wagon if you have evidence that can prove that you were taking Tylenol during your pregnancy. Um, during this time, they did research with uh, these, I guess, what, what do you call it? The, not the umbilical cord, right? They, they took samples from the umbilical cord, but it doesn't really prove much. It's because Tylenol only lasts in your system for X amount of time, and you can't really say it's causation, and that's what they're trying to say. It, it might not be the case, but there's a strong case to be made. And they're trying to sue for failure to warn the, the mothers, general negligence, breach in express warranty, whatever that means, breach of an implied warranty, negligent misrepresentation, and so, so on. Yeah, if you took Tylenol or you plan on taking Tylenol, stop now. Find another one. You know, there's there's plenty of other things that you, you can possibly take. I I myself am trying to figure out how to clear out the cupboard. Tylenol, even even I had a headache the other day and I was hesitant to take it. I do know that every single do, time I do take Tylenol, I don't feel normal though, I'll tell you that. I feel better, but I don't feel normal still. I still feel like a subtle high or, or a, a brain fog. I don't know about you, well, what is your experience when you take acetaminophen? I, I rarely take it. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I try to practice a natural route. I try to take nothing and just, I mean, 
people say with headaches, just drink more water. Sometimes it could be you, you're dehydrated. And yeah, but yes. water doesn't really cure it. I mean, it doesn't fix the problem. You have to have potassium and sodium to go along with it. Just to let you guys know, you, you, there's electrolytes. That's what the electrolytes is. It's uh, sodium and potassium. So it, it helps the brain. Just water itself it won't it won't do do much. Well, yeah, I don't I don't get too many headaches luckily. So I don't I don't really pop any Tylenol. Mm -hmm. I haven't probably popped Tylenol in years or take any medication. But isn't that mind-boggling to you that one out of 44 or 59 kids have autism now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's definitely something uh, we're trying to figure out ourselves because like we did on the first episode, it's like we talked about Agent Orange and all that and you're just trying to get to the root cause of things, you know, because I feel like at the end of the day, that's, that's what it is. I mean, you kind of got to backtrack of how your upbringing was and how you can relate and possibly rule out things because mm -hmm. i mean i feel like that's what doctors do i mean they, they, they try to figure out as much as possible about you and your life and they try to make recommendations on their studies <laughs>